me bag all packed anyway. iPod, wallet, yeah, boots are in there. Big bag, isn't it? I'm gonna have to take, take some stuff with us. When he comes home again in a couple of months, he hopes to bring back the World Cup. Today, though, he has other concerns. I need socks. Can I find socks in this house? Alex, you know where my socks are? I've got no socks. Whoops, there's a bit. It's a year to the day since he lifted the European Cup for Liverpool in Istanbul. Just waiting for the, for the car to, to be here, man. Are all the windows locked, Alex? A year which has seen him grow into one of the world's greatest players. A year he will never forget. The public face of the footballer is one thing. The private face of a father and a friend, quite another. How fat his ass is, look. That's why he's on a diet, look. Those fat asses. This is Paul McGrath, my friend. Well, I've probably mentioned it about three million times that I want to be an actor. <laughs> Meet the people who make Steven Gerrard who he is when he steps off the pitch. Daddy never farted. Daddy doesn't fart. <laughs> From those who think they know him to those who really do. Seven. Eight. What he likes. He's got this thing about washing yeah, wash his hands up 15 times a day. What he doesn't like. You get brought up to, to dislike Man United. And what he does when he thinks he can't be seen. Marsha, do you want to tell them what you do? I think, you know, you should come in at some point and tell us your role. The whole global right. thing, you know. It began in Istanbul. 3-0 down to AC Milan, the 24-year-old skipper inspired Liverpool to the greatest comeback in the history of the European Cup. The instant Jerzy Dudek kept out Andrei Shevchenko's shot, Gerard went global. An international byword for bravery and, above all, belief. I got a company in um, to... You know, I wanted it, the room done, especially, and they came in and they gave me the idea of the mannequins um, because, obviously, it's the biggest night in my football career. I didn't realise how big it was until, like, they, they'd won it, you know what I mean? How big, how important the game was. I mean, because girls are different, aren't they, with football? Like, they wanted this set up for the both shirts, but they wanted them to spin. So we had, like, electric things put in and they spin around. It's just showing off, really, but, you know, it's always nice uh, to come in here and, you know, go back to, to Istanbul on the night. I don't think the baby was well at the time, so I had to watch it on my own in the house. You with the baby on my own, yeah. Switch them off, save on the lucky. It's just people everywhere on lampposts, buildings, shops, cars. There was horns going, there was shouting, screaming, tears. There was horses knocking people over. It was just, just an experience I'll never forget. Away from football, that's probably one of the biggest buzzes I've ever had, being on that open top bus. But it wasn't long before celebration turned to anxiety. For the second summer in succession, Chelsea left their calling card. And this time, Stephen very nearly left. The Chelsea stuff in the summer of 2005 was probably the lowest of my career. I've just seen a Gerard 17 shirt going on fire. And this guy holding it. Most of the big clubs in Europe had made it known one way or another that if Stephen was of a mind to leave Liverpool Football Club, that they would all want to be involved. I've never really had stress or pressure, luckily, uh, but that was, like, the first time ever I felt, because you could just feel it, you know, like, in the room, around, and 
you could just see it in his face and, and, and in, his, in his eyes that he was, he was fearing that. So. And you have to remember too, with, with, even with people like Stephen, that there is an insecurity. Um, you know, for all the confidence on the pitch, um, he needs reassurance. Um, and I think Stephen had perhaps convinced himself that um, he wasn't as important to us as he clearly was. I can assure now to our fans that we want that Steve stay with us. You know, just coming back 30, 32 years of age with, with medals from another club, you know, who ever got to show them to, you would be interested in seeing them. You know what I mean? Whereas I wanted to stay to, to even if it's just to win one premiership at Liverpool, everyone will want to see it. It'll mean so much more to myself and the people around me. A couple of days down the line, I signed to Liverpool. Yeah, man, I comes out the, out of the training ground to and stop to sign some of the fans' autographs, and he comes over to the car. Oh, listen, um, you haven't fell out with me, have you? You haven't fell out with me. And I went, well, why would the fall out? Yeah, he went. Uh, I'm the one who was burning your shirt and all that. I said, well, to be honest with you, mate, I couldn't, I couldn't care less. He probably thinks, you know, burning the shirt made me stay. They're the things that happen, though. The ink was barely dry on Stephen's new contract when he was back in action, back in Europe, and back doing what he does best. A hat-trick against Welsh side Total Neckwear Solutions may not rank amongst his greatest achievements, but it dispelled any doubts the cop may have had about his motivation and his loyalty. To score a hat trick, I mean, to score a goal for Liverpool was rare for me, but to get a hat trick was, was special. I don't know what I was uh, having for breakfast uh, over them couple of weeks, but I just seemed to be scoring quite, quite a few goals and, um, you know, over the, the pre season, he just started flowing. And it didn't stop there. Liverpool breezed through three rounds of Champions League qualification. Stephen was a man on a mission. Seven goals already, and the season had barely begun. New contract, new season, new address. This is my house. I'm going to take you on a guided tour and show you around. This is meant to stay private, but come inside. <laughs> Again. Lights. This is the dining room. Um, this is where we have family meals together. This is where me and Alex relax at night when, when the baby is asleep. We can come in here and put Sky TV on and chill out. It's a really cosy and warm room. This is the, the lounge room we use of a day where, when the baby is about. Uh, obviously, there's a wooden floor in case, case she makes any mess. And Welcome to my games room. These are the doors I had made. Um, glass ones, they've got images of the Champions League night on. And this is a room that I like to, to spend with my friends and stuff. We have a little bet on the pool table. That's an England shirt, by the way. No, no, no man shirt to the lad in here. This is a swimming pool area that we had as my attic ball, the one and only. This is the steam room uh, we had built on. Um, I think you can get seven or eight people in there. Great lad, I have to put him up as well, Case. Uh, I wasn't going to put him up because he's not really at that top level, but <laughs> because case he comes on, gives me a visit, I've got to throw one in. <laughs> this is um, Lily's room. She's asleep at the moment, so you'll have to be quiet. I've got a little TV for her for when she wants the cartoons on. No bedroom but a TV, really. We've had a TV put in to watch the games. 60-inch plasma TV. There's a TV area over here. Put Sky TV on. And we had a TV put in. Me and Alex are a big fan of watching the telly. This is uh, mine and Alex's room. There's the, the chair, the Kazi. If you just bend the camera around there, that's where it all happens. Um... After the break, how Stephen met Alex. It's harassment, I think. It was just um, loads and loads of phone calls. And... And what made this lady so weak at the knees? After a difficult summer, Stephen is slipping back into the old routine. It's exciting, you know, you've had um, usually around three or four weeks rest, uh, holidays, and um, you're excited to see the lads to talk about what they've been up to. Um, you're looking forward to getting back in training because you haven't done much over the last three or four weeks. Sammy, have you? 
Should we try and get alongside them? He's got more money than me, though. Look, he's got a faster car. <laughs> How do you spell Craig? C R A I G. Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't you in school? Off today. We, are, we, have, we have to go in for ten minutes. I don't believe you. Go to Zilla Shell if you want. You're just sagging, aren't you? Yeah. Why aren't you? In a bit, Steve. In a bit. <laughs> Here we go. Another day, another dollar. Life at the training ground may have been comfortably familiar, but all was not well on the pitch. Liverpool had simply stopped scoring. Their football stuttered. The East Ham Bull effect had vanished. It was to be their worst start ever to a Premier League campaign. By the end of September, they'd won just one in six. As far as, far as a load of goals going in for us from our centre forwards, you know, it's not happening at the moment, but... Um... If you're, if you're asking me, I'm a doubt in our forwards, the answer is no, because I know there's quality up there. Fernando Moriente, Peter Crouch, Gabriel Cisse, there's, there's quality there and there's goals there. And confidence is a bit low at the moment, but the team's playing really well and the chances are getting created, so I know it's only a matter of time before goals start flying in. And don't be surprised if, you know, a lot of critics are proven wrong. The manager, the fans, Stephen himself, all expect a lot. So too do the sponsors. It's never Stevie's real focus to market himself off the pitch. You know, he has his major sponsors who we who we enjoy a, a, a nice relationship with. Who <laughs> decides this? The reason I put you in this is I, I saw a picture in the paper the other day. Do. Marsha, do you want to tell them what you do? I think, you know, you should come in at some point and tell us your role. It's a whole global Aye. thing, you know. And what's done and what's not done. Um, are they... F uh, I'm lost, I'm lost. Steve, you and I mm. sitting eating out of plastic plates with your banoffee pie there. This is perfect, leathercouchestable.com. Tea, it's a compliment to the yeah. chef, look. I'm just, uh, just real. Hi right, guys, sorry to interrupt. Uh, is everyone all right in terms of food, drinks? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's yeah. fine. Yeah. Right. Did you do the banoffee pie? It was, uh, sorry. Did you make the banoffee pie? In. No, why was it bad? Oh, it was top draw. <laughs> no, say this, say this, it was top draw. <laughs> Feel better from before. <laughs> yeah, I was doing a bit of acting, I think, to myself. I don't know, this is just not me. Come in and watch the boys have a little laugh at them, but it's poor, isn't it? It's poor. <laughs> Out of the red number eight and into the white number four. England had been unruffled by most of their opponents in the World Cup qualifiers. However, victory over Wales was followed by defeat in Belfast. At Windsor Park, they were toppled by Northern Ireland. They made hard work of it, but in the end, they qualified for the World Cup. I think the majority of our, our qualifiers were so-so were performances, but we finished top of the group. Um, we've, we've done the job, and the good thing is there's still a lot more to come. Yes, that is great. Yeah, off. Oh, Andy, that's great. I think it's the same thing. That's fab. Yeah, could you tune up a little more there? We're doing a photo shoot at Christmas one. Um, this is all Alex, by the way. Um, they're coming out of the house to put some decorations up for Lily, and they want to do a family photo shoot. So, um, looking forward to that. It's a big thing for Alex. It's just some publicity for her. I mean, that's the kind of stuff she likes doing, modelling and getting a picture stuck. So, it's what she enjoys, and I don't mind joining in for her sake. These women. 
I knew Alex before we actually met. Um, my friend knew her really well. Um, and I asked my friend to sort of ask, can I have a number to phone her up? And she refused. So I just done it off my own back and tried my luck. Um, got speaking to her. Um, she wasn't really, she wasn't coming across her first. She was playing hard to get. I'd seen him around like Liverpool a few times, and I knew, and I know, I knew his friends, and he was just one of them really. And then we seen each other in the club, and um, <laughs> I hate talking about this. <laughs> it says embarrassing. Big smiles, big smiles. We get around. To be honest, when I first met him, he was that like I'm cheeky, but just like really like confident. Do you know what I mean? I thought as a male, he was just like. He didn't shut off. He came to me once as I was babysitting and he just told me he was coming and I'm like, how's it going on now? Because I thought I hadn't even met him before. And the, the last thing, I think, when you first meet someone is to be stuck in a house babysitting. It was harassment, I think. It was just um, loads and loads of phone calls and stuff like that. And my friend also helped him knew it. He was sort of like trying to persuade her, but I got there in the end. It wasn't easy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come and say hello. Come and say hello, look. Oh, you're going to shy me, girl. You've been in school today, haven't you? Alex, though, isn't the only lady in the Gerard house. You're a big girl. She's 21 months now. She's going to be two in February, so um, she, she's getting big and cheeky and she's starting to talk a lot. And I'm really enjoying her at the moment, being a, being a dad. Lily, like, loves him. He's, she's, all she says is his name, so... And um, he's dead, like, hands-on and that. He always taking her out and doing things with her, so she loves it. Seven. Eight. Eight. I do mocking you know, around the house with changing nappies and um, dressing her, washing her, brushing her teeth, and you know, just getting involved in, in, in being a dad. I love it. When I'm on the telly, she, she shouts at me and she goes to the telly and kisses the telly and stuff. But you know, she, she doesn't understand like. Uh, what she's in for when she's a bit older. Liverpool in the Champions League. Calm, calculating, efficient. They stifle the life out of Chelsea and do just enough to put the rest away. For all their teams labouring in the league, European nights remain special to Liverpool. We're flying in Europe at the minute, you know. Um, I think teams are actually turning up against us and fearing us now in Europe because they know we're such a good side. No need for last-ditch heroics this time. Liverpool had topped their group with something to spare. Win, lose or draw, there's always someone there to offer support. Time to meet his mate, Gratty. Hi, I'm Paul McGratton. You don't know who I am. But you will do soon. <laughs> <laughs> Paul McGrath and my friend. He actually thinks he's been in films. He's convinced he's been in a few and he's convinced he's going to be in more. How many films have you been in? Uh, in this country, you know. He's always there for me if I need him, if I need someone to talk to, if I'm feeling a bit down. Um, you know, He's really close and as I said to you, I can tell him anything. Um, he'll do anything for me and, and vice versa. Hi, I'm Paul McGrath. You don't... Ned's laughing in the background! Basically, it's... Borders on babysitting. He needs everything. He's cut 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He's run, run his life. But you will do soon. Deadpan. Yeah, deadpan. But you, but you will do soon. What level are you going to try and hit? What are your heights? What are your ambitions? Well, obviously, aim high, innit? You know, someone said to you... Keep the dream alive. Someone said to you when you signed pro, look at what you're going to do. You wouldn't say, well, have a year there and go to Berry. No disrespect to Berry and just... You know, you said, well, I'd want to stay there and win trophies, which you did, so... Sure. What's the point? And you did, so there you go. Pipe dreams are good. Hi, I'm Paul McGratton. You don't know who I am. But you will do soon. <laughs> <laughs> that was horrendous! <laughs> that was bad! You know, you bad just that. Bad. Bad. <laughs> bad. <laughs> Back in the Premier League, as autumn turned to winter, Liverpool turned the screw, eking out the goals for, and quite simply eliminating goals against. They played 11 games without conceding one, a new club record. They notched up 36 points in the league from a possible 36. 
The captain was clearly having fun. I'm enjoying it because we're winning. It's the most important thing. Yeah, my form's okay. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of chances on goal as well, so yeah, things are good. sort of men of 2005 issue where we want to highlight the sort of main most influential headliners and heroes of the year and obviously Stephen Gerrard the Champions League win and the, the whole run through that tournament was probably one of the greatest sort of single performances by a footballer over the course of that season there is a sense that this you know that this could be could be his year even more than you know last year was it's the fact I think that the He's still at Liverpool. Nearly went, didn't. And I think there's that sense that he's he's kind of just stayed true to to, to Liverpool and, and, and seeing it through. You just never think he, he you know he was a star, and he's just very normal. He does not like any sort of attention at all. You know, he just likes to play his football, and that's it. Action. But he's, a, he's quite a difficult person to get to know, really. There's like five barriers before you, you know, you get near him, and he's very really tough to get to know. But when you know him, um, he's, a, he's, a, you know, he's a special, special person. Washes his hands all the time. You <laughs> won't believe. <laughs> he's lying, you know. It's not an obsession, really. He's got this thing about washing, yeah, washes his hands about 15 times a day. See, all done. And we had to go to chemist last week and get stuff because his hands were just falling off. They just flay. They just he would take a throw one day and they just their skin will be everywhere because they just they just flake it away. 2006, a new year, and the Champions League got serious. Liverpool fully expected to stroll past Benfica. The first leg in Portugal tore apart their optimism. When the return leg came round. Liverpool would need a performance of controlled aggression. But just before half time, Samal broke free and blew the game apart. In the end, Benfica rubbed their noses in it. The European dream was over. Just went with the boys for a couple of pints just to get, get something of that game out the system as quick as possible. Tired of that or drive yourself mad in the house. 48 hours later, Liverpool Airport. We're on our way over to Paris to uh, hand the Champions League trophy back. Might be a few cheeky women about. How fat his ass is, look. <laughs> That's why he's on a diet, look. Look how fat his ass is. <laughs> oh, oh, clippage. Some place, this, isn't it? It's like that boy doing the chandeliers, and I was like this. <laughs> so we are delighted to welcome you to Paris and to the beautiful city hall for this historic UEFA Champions League Cup handover and draw ceremony. Stephen Girard. It's a special feeling here to win the cup five times and you know to have one your own but hopefully next year we'll do a bit better than this year we are sure you i just kept looking at her and i thought she's not right she was like wobbling and slurred in her speech and her eyes were gone and i tried to get the guy's attention to say oh she's not she's gone she's finished oh, still can't get over that <laughs> I was dying to laugh, you know, I was looking at you two, you, two, you, two, you two were both laughing and I was thinking, I can't look at them. Did you see me then? You don't have to do it. was going, oh, that was the best thing ever to do. She got eight points in the second one. She's very good standing up. First one was like laughing too. She just wouldn't go down. She was like, hold on, you're thinking. Oh, that's awful. Go down, just go down. Look at big John Tex. Even money, she faints again, 20 to run, the skipper catches her. He'd have lost his money, wouldn't he? <coughs> I feel, feel like I've been to see the FA for like a ban or something, you know what I mean? This is what it's like, anyway. You when know, you've just got a three-game ban. 
still haven't recovered from that. Start the front. Lovely, innit? The love surf to the red to the final lane. Back in the Premier League and Manchester United. One of the most important games of the season. The two most successful clubs in the history of English football. More than a matter of local pride. It was a tight game. Liverpool were undone by a late, late goal. While Rio Ferdinand celebrated with his teammates, Gary Neville ran the length of the pitch and punched out his delight in front of the visiting supporters. To be honest with you, I didn't know he'd done it during the game. Um, but I haven't seen it on the TV. I think he, you know, his reaction was a bit over the top. Uh, I'm sure he's regretting that now. It's disappointing for the run to come and end at Old Trafford and stuff. And it took us a while getting over it, and the results were affected from that defeat, I think. In February, they lost at the home of the runaway leaders, Chelsea. Then March saw them visit Arsenal. Another big game and another close encounter. And once more, it didn't end well for Steven. I made a kamikaze mistake um, by trying to pass back to the keeper. I've never seen Henri and he latched onto it, went around the keeper. Um, it's the second time I've, I've done that to him. Yeah, he's quite clever. And I thought I'd, I'd learn from it from the first time, but I've made the same mistake twice. This year, we've taken on one or two other deals of the hundreds we've been offered. And I don't think it's got too much, but I think it's probably a, 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 about as much as Stevie's prepared to accept. It's when results are not going well on the pitch and you know, you've got to do stuff that you don't want to do and stuff, it can, it can get on top of you, but, you know, um, we're very lucky people. We get paid really well uh, for doing what we love and we can't complain. We've got to get on with it. We've got to be role models for these young kids that are coming through and make sure we behave properly on and off the pitch. Yes, Joe. Okay, she's okay, get it going, boys and girls. Yeah! Ready and action! Please go in again. Was he nice? Um, not really, or a bit muddy. <laughs> I think when he's tired, for whatever reason, if that's training or games or travelling, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's got a presence or an aura that can be quite intimidating to people as well, which will add to the, if he's reasonably short with you, he has a certain way that maybe uh, makes it worse than it actually is, you know. Sorry, that's one. Oh, thanks a lot. Thank you. Guys, he's got to go. He's got to. He's got to get home. I'm really sorry. Please stay. I must be a nightmare to be down when we've been beat, or if I've personally had a bad game or made a bad mistake. Because I'm, I'm someone who takes football serious. You know what I mean? It's priority in my life. So if, if things are not going well, I, I probably take it into me social life as well. We have all have good days and bad days. He, he has more than most, believe it or not. Um, if he's tired, you get... It's not that he's bad, it's just that you get nothing out of him. You know, because I'm quite lively, as you know, and... He's Being like, an actor and that, you know. Yeah. And he, bubbly. He, he's, he's sitting there and, oh, what about this? Uh, this? Yeah. Oh, what about... Uh. Sometimes he can, like, he can be all right, and then other times he'll, he'll think that he's going to be all right, and then he'll come home and his, his eyes will be a bit chocolate on that ball. He's, he's, just, he's not like a horror. He's not like horrible. He's just got a face on him. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> a few weeks later, 
Anfield is packed. It's Manchester United again. This time they meet in the last 16 of the FA Cup. For Stephen and for every Liverpool fan, this is a huge game. You get brought up to, to dislike Man United around here and their biggest game of the season at Liverpool and ours is Manchester United. With the Premier League already sewn up by Chelsea, the FA Cup has suddenly assumed a huge importance. There's a pressure at Liverpool to deliver trophies every season. Um, I, I sometimes listen to Gary Neville's interviews about Manchester United and he says, you know, one trophy every season is the minimum acceptable um, target and it's the same at Liverpool. In the spotlight, Peter Crouch, hammered all season by the press, he becomes the unlikely hero. I think we thoroughly deserved our win. I think we controlled the game from start to finish. And, you know, the person who has come under so much criticism has put us into the last day, Peter Crouch. Into the quarter-finals then, and they had suddenly remembered how to score goals. Birmingham could only watch on in horror as the dam burst. 7-0. Liverpool had blasted their way into the semi-finals. The fans could celebrate another cup run, knowing there was still plenty to look forward to. No, not a bad looking lad, is he? Average the shout was last week. No, you're not an ugly. You said, got no, you said they've got no colour to me, eh? You've got a funny, yeah. You've got, it's, not, it's not brown, it's not fair, it's, it's not in there, but you're not, you're not bad, you're not ugly. The gays like him. The gays love me. He was just gay. <laughs> he was gay. Gay man 2005, he was. Proud of that. Who, who won it this year? I don't know. Do you, do you win it again? We just don't know, yeah? I don't, I don't think I've had it for the full year, yeah. Haven't you? No, still enjoying the title. Still to come. Stephen gets dressed up for a big night in London. Come on, cheeky little wonders. What Alex is on. And there are more developments off the pitch. I used to think football was the most important thing in my life and that, that's all I had, but now I've got you know a family of my own, and I realise how important they are to me, and they're, they're number one in my life now. We're just having a little bit of a, a tea party for her. We took her out today to see the animals, and uh, she had a pizza with her friends, and these are all her relations. They've just come round to um, have a swim with her and play with her, really. The people who are always around me, family and stuff, they don't see me as uh, Stephen Gerrard, the footballer. I mean, when I spend time with them, they treat me like um, the normal Steven Gerrard, which is the way I like to be. Spewed up in the pool. No, and it's all right. Just mix it in. They don't let me stay on that pedestal, you know. They, they bring me back down to earth and they make sure I'm still myself. And I'd like to think that they like spending time with me. I have some sandwiches as well, because she's having no tea. We all love each other, the family are close. And get away from football, it's just the normal Steven Gerrard, the boring. I'm born Stephen Gerrard. That one. Green. It's one thing as a footballer you have to learn, learn to deal with the money side of it. I respect money and I realise that now I have got money, um, you know, I need to do the right things with it. I don't need to become flash or become anyone different or become big headed and start spending money on, on stupid flash things. Go on, you can eat your pizza now. I like to uh, treat my family. Um, I look after me, my mum, my dad, my brother financially. One used to tuck in now to all the sweets and drinks. You know, I've come across and played against and been in the company of footballers who, who, who are playing the game for the money. It's as simple as that and don't respect the game. They just want money and the flash and they buy the wrong things and they come across you know, totally wrong. And they're the kind of people who you learn off and you, you look at them and you think, you know, I don't want to come across like that. I, you know, I want to play football for the right reasons and I want to spend my money right and spend the money on the right things and make sure that. Uh, I treat money with respect. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Lily. Happy birthday to you. Lily. I 
was at Liverpool Football Club when I was eight years of age. If I didn't play for Liverpool Football Club, I'd still play Sunday League football with my mates. I love football that much. Um, it's just that I've worked so hard and um, you know to get where I am today, and I've dreamed of being where I am today. And um, fortunately enough for me, uh, the job pays really well. Hello. What you hear? <laughs> Number three, Chelsea. April, the FA Cup semi-final. What thoughts must have been running through Stephen's mind? Once again, it was Chelsea who stood in the way of his ambitions. Perhaps it was fate. The team he so nearly joined not once, but twice. The billionaires in blue. A flesh and blood reminder of what could have been. The more you play each other, the more you know, fierce it becomes and the more rivalry because uh, there's so much at stake. Buoyed by belief, Liverpool set about the task as if their season depended on it. It did. First, John Arnarisa, and then a brilliant goal from Luis Garcia. Chelsea pulled one back, but victory was once again all dressed up in red. If ever a result mattered, this one did. The nation tends to support the underdog. Um, it happens when we watch Chelsea. You know, we want the other team to win. Um, I don't think it's through hatred, I think it's just because you know, it's nice to see that Chelsea are not going to dominate every competition and win every game. It's nice to see them get beaten out again and get knocked out of a tournament. The very next day, Stephen is in London, just a couple of miles from Stamford Bridge. Oh, we just started this year. Before the weekend, you know, before, before the semi-final, I was thinking to myself, this weekend's either going to be one of the best weekends of my life or one of the worst. Are them cheeky little numbers? They're Alex's, aren't they? <laughs> Why don't you just put buttons on them? What's his chances of winning? How many nominated? Six. Yeah. I'm coming on, let's just straighten the shades up. My mum's watching this. These things are the back. Cheers. All the best. Third place, Thierry Henry. In second place, Frankie Lampard. <coughs> and the winner and PFA Players Player of the Year for 2006 is, I think, probably the best midfield player in Europe, Stevie Gerrard. It's been a great season so far. If we can win the FA Cup and then win the World Cup, it'll be perfect. To win this award above the likes of Thierry Henry, John Terry, you know, to get the nod above players like that, I mean, yeah, it's, just, it's a special award to win. Just two weeks later, baby Lexi is born. Alex decides to be induced early to avoid a fixture pileup. Alex delivered at 9.33, so um, I was helping with the, with the labour for three hours before I come out. And that's our job and our role. I think we've got to get involved and help them get through it because... There's no getting away from it, they, they work hard in that labour and um, they, they, need, they need help to get through it and yeah, I play the captain's role in there, yeah. <laughs> you know, I have to stay up the top end and, and uh, help Alex, you know, go through the pain, but... No, I nearly lost my ear though, yeah, at one point Jordan, she was saying, I feel like biting your ear off, so you know, I was getting all the blame. Um, I felt guilty actually. Um, I said, so go on, have a bite and just don't bite it off, I've got a World Cup to play in, in a few <laughs> weeks. His duties as a father. I've just doubled. It was up till two last night, wind, didn't it? Cheese and nappies, oh. Four sleepless nights later, Cardiff. It would prove to be the game to define a long busting season. Yeah, I never slept well the night before. I was thinking about it, how it was going to go, and I think once, when you're going in, favourites, it's like you. On Cup final day, it's all talking about the game, about set pieces about the small details, about who you're marking, what could happen, what, what might happen. Just to make sure every single player is 100% ready to go into it. Dean Ashton, he had a big hand in the first goal, and Jamie, he was unlucky to score it on goal. And their keeper makes a mistake and we're 2-0 down with 30 minutes played. That's when you start worrying, you know, it's not going to be your day. And, he might be picking up a runner's, a runner's up medal. I 
play there, a free kick to, to Peter Crouch, and it was onside. We've looked back at the tapes, and it's onside. And, and they did the decisions you need to go for you to make the game a little bit easier, and it wouldn't have went to extra time as that goal stood. The ball for Jibria was was instant. Yeah, I seen him make a good run, and I managed to to, to play the ball you know, spot on. It was a great finish. He still had a lot of work to do, but he done really well. At two one. Um, it's still in the first half. That's when you, you know, you get a bit of belief. Similar to Istanbul, when when I get my header, if you get one back, you know the, the other team's going to have a negative reaction, and there's a chance you get back into the game. Being two one down, uh, a Cardiff to a good side like West Ham, we needed um, the Istanbul experience and the players to remember that night to believe that we could we could still win the game. It was a hit and hold ball into the box by Xavi, and there was three or four players that went up for it at the same time. And Peter just ma managed to stretch his neck and get a nod down. And I knew as soon as he set the ball, uh, I knew I could score because the set was perfect to hit on the volley, and I just smashed it into the roof of the net. I was actually the closest to Paul and tried to stop the cross. And if he would have crossed the ball, I, I would have stopped it. Um, but because he has missed it, missed it the cross and. It's gone in the top corner. It's one of them goals where you think West Ham's name's on the cup. It's not going to be our day. I thought, you know, the game's over. Um, I just thought we were just seeing out the clock. You know, I was cramped up. I was really tired. On another day, I've never had cramp, and um, the scoreline was different. I may have tried to control that ball and tried to set up an attack, but. I just thought to myself that you know the clock's running out, time's running out. I'm just going to hit this as hard as I can and try and hit the target. And of course, it's so nice. You could see the West Ham boys sort of, you know, it knocked the stuff out of them, and they, I think they lost belief. You've got 90 minutes in that heat on such a big pitch, and the game was up and down. It was, a, it was an attacking game. By the time we got towards the end of 90 minutes, I was camping up, and once we went into extra time, I was really struggling with it. Neither side had much energy to go and, go and get a winner, so... And I was quite happy with that, you know, being the captain. I thought to myself, if this goes to penalties, you know, we, we've got to be favourites. I know it's a lottery, but I knew how good Pepe Reina was at penalties. I've seen him in training. You know, I've seen tapes of him save penalties in, in Spain, and I knew he was a, a better penalty stopper than Xavi as well. The stadium still full, it's rocking. Um, I lost the toss and the penalties were at the West Ham end. So I'm walking up to the penalty and you can, I'm getting booed and the West Ham fans are trying the best to put me off. Um, but it was just all focus and concentration. I knew where I was going walking up to the penalty. Um, I'd practised a few in training, a couple of days leading up to it. Yeah, I made sure the ball was on the floor properly. Yeah, and my run up was right and I just I knew exactly what I was going to do to it. I was going to do it with the laces into the, into the right. Stephen had done his bit. The rest was inevitable. The margin of victory wafer thin, but a million miles. Those who were not in Cardiff to witness it saluted their hero in his absence. The Gerard final, as it will doubtless be known to future generations, had matched Istanbul for drama and brought another major trophy back to the city, which perhaps more than any other, yearns for success on the football field. Liverpool prepared to welcome home their team, the cup and their captain. I can't describe it, I'm feeling it. It's right up there with, the, with Istanbul. Tuesday was obviously another... Great night for myself. I mean, Lily, uh, obviously one of the best nights of my life, and then Lexi, uh, second girl. And it's been a great week for me. Not much sleep, but uh, just glad to have this cup in my hands, and I can't wait to celebrate with the boys in a minute. Unbelievable, really. Before the season started, the idea was for a massive improvement in the league and, and to try and deliver a trophy for our superb supporters. And 
yes, I'm just glad it's all it's all done and dusted now, and now I can just forget about Liverpool for for the summer and concentrate fully on England now. I'm sure that bacon butty on there, dietitian will be happy. It's my last bacon butty for the next month. <laughs> Grazie on the phone now, but it is difficult. I miss everyone. I'm, I'm a homeboy. I like being at home. The FA car's gone to my old address. From an individual point of view, I want to go there and, and, and play well, Just continue my form from Liverpool into England. Um, and from the team's point of view, we, we want to bring the trophy back. We've got a great chance with the players we've got, yeah, the belief in the squad. If we get a couple more players 100% fit and sharp, we, we can win the tournament. Of course, you dream about it all the time. Yeah, it's such a magic trophy and it's the biggest competition you can play in as a player. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to get my hands on it and I'm going to give everything I've got to try and make that happen and I'm sure the rest of the boys are. Yeah, but it's exciting times for the country. I'm sure it'll be buzzing by the time the, the World Cup gets underway and you know, I can promise all the supporters and everyone out there will give it our best shot. Next on Sky One. It's Rooney! Paddy McGuinness takes us inside the mind and body of Wayne Rooney. I'm going in! And now showing on Sky Box Office. You think you deserve it? I know I do. You're playing with that much. In London on Saturday. More football in goal. <laughs> 